Michelle Obama's memoir is a work of deep reflection and mesmerizing storytelling. It's told in her own style, with honesty, with boldness. It takes us through moments of heart-stopping grief, profound resilience, and she emerges on the other side as a iconic and a very compelling woman. It is divided into three sections, becoming me, becoming us, and becoming more. It takes us through a small apartment on the south side of Chicago to ballrooms of palaces and of course the corridors of White House. We step into Michelle Obama's world as she chronicles the event that shaped her. Her parents are the two big influences in her life and she herself says, we are each the sum total of our respective genetic codes as well as everything installed in us by our parents and their parents before them. And they installed in her to be outspoken and unafraid. How come you talk like a white girl? A seemingly innocent question asked by a cousin. Immediately put young Michelle on the defensive. As though she had not checked a box or she did not fit into a square or she was not African-American enough. The not feeling good enough, being told patronizingly by a counselor in high school that she was not Princeton material. The awkwardness of being a minority student in Princeton, which she describes uh, feeling like poppy seeds in a rice bowl, which is quite different from what the general felt. And I was so happy to hear that. Then there was Harvard Law School, a job at a top law firm. The intern who she mentored, who in her own words, upended her life, married her and went on become, to become the president of the United States. With an unusual openness, she speaks of her struggle in her relationship and in her marriage. The loneliness of living with a man whose strong sense of purpose was very, very alive. The counseling they sought, and I quote here, being married and coexisting with Barack's strong sense of purpose, sleeping in the same bed with it, sitting at the breakfast table with it, was something to which I had to adjust. Not because he flaunted it, but because it was so alive. And in her dilemma, because she's not fond of politics, it, they nauseate her, of whether Barack Obama should run for presidency, she says, he wanted it, I didn't. I said yes, because I believed he could be a great president. Yes, because I had faith in what he could do. And I said yes, because I also felt certain he wouldn't make it all the way. And we know what happened. He made it all the way. <laughs> Then came the eight years in the White House, the hundreds of decisions. And some of these things are very interesting because we really don't know about all this. The hundreds of decisions from picking out bath towels to beer for the White House. The $100,000 of federal money that every president is given to move and to redecorate, which the Obamas didn't take. They decided that they pay for everything personally. I'd love to see that in Indian politics. As an African-American family in the White House, they did not want any error or any lapse in judgment. They felt they had to be twice as good to go half as far. Interesting snippets that tell us that the White House was like a very expensive hotel with a Michelin standard chef and quite costly to live in. Rent free, but every food item and every toilet roll and every personal gift paid for by them personally. In fact, I think there's a little snippet. Um, I saw an interview in which uh, Michelle Obama says that she had to tell her husband, please do not say I like this fish or like this plum, because she said that she got the bill and the plums actually had been flown in from China and they have to pay for it personally. So Barack Obama was told by his wife not to say this is really lovely or good food. <laughs> she has been held up as the most powerful woman in the world. She has been taken down as an angry black woman. She has smiled for photos with people who've called her husband horrible names and sitting congressmen who have actually made fun of her butt. She speaks of the Republicans blocking Obama proposed bills again and again and declaring that their party goal was to make sure he be a one-term president. She tells a story as she has lived it with her trademark, trademark honesty and humor. She describes her triumphs. She describes her disappointments, both in her public life, in her private life. 
the book is warm the book is wise it is definitely rev uh, revelatory and it is inspirational at a time of social division discrimination against minority and unequal opportunities for women there are many lessons in this book to be learned by all of us especially for young people who may need to find themselves again and who find that they don't fit in or they don't conform to type one of the key decisions a woman makes and i think all of the women here will agree with me is in deciding whom she's going to marry will there be true and equal partnership will there be support for her to reach her full potential will there be support for her to realize all her dreams michelle obama chose very well and that is illustrated beautifully in barack obama's response to the question he was asked constantly are you going to run for president and his response would be it's a family decision but what it really meant if michelle says so the most michelle obama esque of doctrines which she's very famous for when they go low we go high i think we've all had those moments when we want to lash back or scream at an unfair comment or judgmental comment and one would love to go low but going low means you're operating from i think a place of emotion and uh, you're being controlled by your emotions and what it really achieves is getting your attitude out and it doesn't bring us any results the sitting congressman who made fun of her body recently tweeted that michelle obama really truly lived by her doctrine apparently his young daughter was attending a party and instead of ignoring the girl or being rude to her since the girl's father had been so rude michelle obama sought her out spoke warmly and made her feel comfortable this truly means when they go low you go high and the power of using our voice is to try our best to speak the truth to shed light on stories of people who are often brushed aside and not really make all those comments that the sitting congressman did and honestly in today's world every word matters which means that every kind word you speak and every inspiring post you post will have an impact and lives will change for the better and in today's uh, digital age whether it's a iphone or a tablet or it's a laptop and you're not saying things face to face your words are being typed out they still carry deep meaning and each word matters you don't have to personally know the person in order for the words to have an impact so let's be sure to choose the right words everyone should be treated with dignity and respect offline online anywhere everywhere all of us at some point of time in our lives have this inner struggle that michelle has spoken about in her book and i'll conclude with this at times questioning or not whether we are good enough i can tell you from my experience that those feelings of whether we are good enough never disappear you'll always have that feeling oh my god what did i do or oh my god what am i doing here and it isn't the end of your life and sometimes they make you go that extra mile and you come out a better version of yourself they're all quite useful and i think as michelle obama says it's all a part of becoming so a highly recommended book thank you